What's up guys, Damon Ortega with Triarm Defense. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put together your own IFAC and we're going to talk about some items that may or may not need to go in there and what items I use personally in my own IFAC. So guys, so like I said, we are going to be talking about how to put together your first individual first aid kit or IFAC for short. IFACs were originally brought on by the military. Coming from the military, myself from the Marine Corps, we all had our own individual first aid kit um, that we wore everywhere in combat zones and training, uh, anything like that. Anything where we could potentially get hurt, um, we always had an IFAC with us. It's usually made up of a small uh, piece of kit like this, uh, something that could be easily stored on the body, somewhere it doesn't take up a lot of room, but it allows you to put a lot of different uh, pieces of gear, pieces of medical gear that allow you to potentially save your life or somebody else's um, if needed. Now, being an individual first aid kit is not necessarily meant for another person. It's meant for yourself. If you were to get shot or you were to get uh, cut or something happen, it's meant for you to use immediately for yourself. Usually if somebody else, say in the military, if somebody else gets hurt, they usually have their own IFAC. You can pull pieces of medical gear out of their IFAC and use it on them, but it's not ideal to use your own stuff on somebody else because if something happens to you, well, now you don't have it. But when we're talking about an individual first aid kit in the civilian uh, realm or the civilian uh, populace, um, it's a little different. So there's different IFACs for different situations. So for me, I have one in my truck, I have one in my home, and I have one that I wear on my belt anytime I teach any kind of firearms courses or anything like that, I always have it with me. So depending on what you're doing, whether you're going hiking or whether you're going to a shooting range or a training event, something happens in your house with your kids or your wife or yourself, there's always different pieces of medical gear per individual first aid kit, just depending on what you plan on doing. So if I plan on having a kit just for my home, I'm probably gonna have a lot more in that kit than I would have if I was taking a kit with me to say the shooting range or to teach a firearms course. The whole point of an individual first aid kit or an IFAC is to have just enough medical equipment in it to potentially save your life or somebody else's life in a traumatic event. We're not looking at boo-boo kits, we're not looking at first aid kits, we're looking at trauma stop the bleed uh, pieces of medical gear. Something that could immediately stop blood loss to keep you alive or to keep somebody else alive. So there are a lot of pre-made or pre-put together kits out there uh, in the interwebs that you can uh, buy for yourself so you don't have to put one together yourself. They are going to be a little more pricey because they are already put together for you so you don't really have to worry about a whole lot. But even if you buy something that's pre-made, you still need to know what's in it. You still need to know how to use everything that's in it. And uh, it would be who of you to look at what's in it do I need that? Do I not need that? Or is there something in it that I don't, or there's, is there something that I need that I don't have it in that kit? You can go buy that individually from a different site, reputable site, hopefully something like National American Rescue and not Amazon, and then put that in my kit, okay? Uh, just because it's pre-made and pre-packaged does not mean that it's set up for you personally. So let's go ahead and talk about something that I use very frequently anytime I go out on the range, anytime I'm doing a competition, a shooting competition, Anytime I'm doing uh, any kind of shooting instruction or firearms instruction, I always have this with me on my belt as my own individual first aid kit. I actually did a lot of research trying to see if there was something relatively close to what I wanted, um, already pre-made, pre-packaged. That way when I bought it, I didn't have to go buy a bunch of individual pieces and put it all together. It was somewhat already put together and I would be happy with it. Um, but there is some stuff that I ended up having to buy individually. Overall, I think that this is a pretty good IFAC, already pre-packaged, uh, pre-made, that is made to go on a belt. And I've been pretty happy with it so far. I actually got this from Live the Creed, but I've been pretty happy with this kit overall. It's pretty small, it's pretty compact. It stores everything tightly. Nothing's really loose, nothing flops around. I don't have to worry about some kind of Velcro strap popping off and everything popping out, but it's been pretty good for me. So let's talk about some of the stuff I put in it. First and foremost, I wanna talk about the main piece, which is probably my tourniquet. I recommend the Cat7 tourniquet for National American Rescue. A lot of people are in a, in a debate, like what about the RAS tourniquet? What about the Soft T tourniquet? Whatever works for you, and whatever you practice with, that's what you need to use as long as it's, as long as it's from a reputable source. You don't want to buy a knockoff Cat7 tourniquet, for example, off of Amazon 
and then one of the, the windlass breaks or the strap pops off or the tightening strap pops off, something happens because you bought a knockoff instead of buying the real thing. Something you can easily use to tell if it's a real uh, tourniquet, they will have serial numbers on them. So if you buy one from Amazon and it doesn't have a serial number on it, it's probably a knockoff tourniquet or it'd be a safe bet to assume that it's probably a knockoff tourniquet. I haven't really heard a whole lot about the RAS tourniquet. I've never personally used one. Uh, I don't care to use one because I, I'm pretty happy with the Cat7 tourniquet. I have heard a lot about the Soft T Wide tourniquet. It is a very reputable tourniquet. It's vetted. It's, it's good to go as far as the tourniquet is concerned. I personally, again, like the Cat7 tourniquet because I've never used a Soft T Wide tourniquet in a real life situation where I've had to put it on somebody. I've had to use a Cat7 tourniquet multiple times and I'm pretty dang comfortable with the Cat7 tourniquet and know that it works, both in the military and in the civilian world as a paramedic firefighter. My number one piece of gear that I'm gonna put in my IFAC first, because stopping the bleeding is important. You wanna keep the red stuff and the pink stuff. Next, this is just kind of a something you can add onto your kit if you chose to. For me personally, I have two younger kids and I personally put in my own kit a SWAT T tourniquet. Basically what it is, is it's a re elastic rubber band that's used to cut off pressure to the artery on children and animals. So if you have a six month old baby putting a, a cat seven tourniquet is not going to stop the bleeding. If something happens to your kid and your kid's bleeding out and you're trying to put a tourniquet on him, it's probably not going to work. Okay. That's what these are made for. These are made for small humans and animals. Up next, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, chest seals. Um, there's different chest seals out there. I recommend the hyphen chest seal. Pretty cool. They come in a dual pack. So you have one for the front and back if it goes all the way through. But these are very important in case, for, for example, active shooter situations. Somebody comes into where you're at, starts shooting people, you end up getting hit or you know somebody else that gets hit and they have a sucking chest wound and they have a, a, a round that passed through their chest, went out their back or maybe just passed through their chest and you have to plug up that chest wound. Well, that's what these are for. You take them out of the package, take the piece that keeps the sticky stuff from getting dirty, place it on the, the hole, and you're pretty much good to go. It comes vented, so you don't have to worry about taking it off, taking it on, and burping. Hyphen chest seal is a great tool to have in your kit as far as stopping sucking chest wounds, etc. Up next, we are going to talk a little bit about the combat gauze. Quick clock combat gauze. Now, there's different types of combat gauze. Different people make combat gauze. Uh, there's cellulox gauze. There's uh, quick clock combat gauze. There's uh, quick clock dressings, regular Z fold gauze that doesn't have any quick clot or clotting agents in it, just gauze normally. And that's not necessarily a bad thing to have. If you don't want to spend the 40 uh, whatever dollars it costs for some quick clot Z fold gauze, then go out and get normal uh, Z fold gauze for three or four dollars or whatever it costs. Put that in your kit. Something that you can shove into a wound, whether that be in the growing, in the armpit, somewhere you can't put a tourniquet and somewhere you can't put a pressure dressing, right? That's what we're stuffing. Up next, we are going to talk about compression dressings or pressure dressings. All these basically are, are just big A straps that have pieces in the center of them that usually you place over the wound and you can wrap it, wrap it around the centerpiece, wrap it again, wrap it around the centerpiece, very, very simple piece of gear to use. If you've seen it or you've played with it, it does what the name says. It's a pressure dressing. It applies pressure to whatever you're wrapping it around. And there's different styles you can get. This one actually came with a mini compression bandage, smaller pressure wrap, as opposed to getting something a little bulkier like an Israeli bandage um, that serves the same purpose. Uh, I personally like the Israeli bandages, but this is uh, just too good not to keep in there because it's so compact, so easy to use, and it's uh, so easy to fit in that kit without taking up too much room. But an Israeli bandage or just regular pressure dressing is also something you can use that can be just as effective as something like this. Getting down to the smaller items, let's talk a little bit about the NPA or the na uh, nasopharyngeal airways. Some people are comfortable doing these, some people are not comfortable doing these. If you've been trained on it, you're definitely comfortable with it. But if you haven't been trained on shoving one of these down somebody's nose, it might be a little uncomfortable for you and it's okay, you don't have to do that. It does help with their airway. It helps clear up a path for air to go in without really obstructing their throat or their mouth or anything like that. So this one actually comes with a little packet of lube, but lube definitely helps. Uh, sometimes something that can help ease the tube down the, down, down the nasal cavity is ideal. And usually having one packet of lube will do the job, do the trick just fine. Very, very, very simple piece of uh, medical gear to use. It's just a matter of getting comfortable with it 
and knowing uh, how to put it in. They do have different sizes. This one's actually just a 28 French, which is pretty average to most people, 26, 28. If you have one of those, don't worry. If you don't have a 28 and you only have a 26, that's fine. Know how to use it, know how to put it in. Tape. Tape is always a good option to have in your kit. Make sure it's nice and wide, something that you can easily tear and uh, manipulate with your fingers. You don't want something that's super difficult, super sticky, and you're not able to manipulate very easily, especially under stress. It's going to become a lot harder because you're your fine motor skills start to deplete, right? So tape is always something you wanna have in there. Um, along with tape, we also have a set of trauma shears. Now, it'd be up to you on whether or not you wanna get an expensive uh, pair of trauma shears you can use over and over and over again, um, or just getting a simple uh, little pair, mini pair, just like this that can go in a mini IFAC or something that's compact and easy to take with you without being uh, something that's in the way or out there, uh, easy to snag on stuff. So this actually fits pretty well inside the IFAC on top of all the gear. But this is something you should definitely have because if you're a bystander and you roll up on a, a vehicle accident, right? And somebody's got, say, a dislocated shoulder. Nothing crazy, but their shoulder's dislocated and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with them. It might be too painful for them to try to get out of their jacket or out of their shirt, get their arm out of their jacket or out of their shirt so you can look and assess uh, head to toe assessment what's going on with the body. You might have to just say, okay, well, I can't get your arm out. We're gonna have to cut the shirt off or cut the jacket off. Well, that's what these are for. If you can't see the wound, you can't treat the wound. Something a little extra that uh, a lot of people probably don't have in their kits, uh, something that I like to throw in mind simply because it could very well be needed. There's always different options. You can always have a handheld light or uh, maybe your vehicle light's working or maybe their vehicle light's working. But most of the time, don't expect there to be light, especially if you roll up on an incident that's happened at night. Maybe you're out on the street. Maybe you pull your car up to somebody that's been mugged or laying on the side of the street. They're bleeding. Uh, profusely and you're trying to take care of them all right you're trying to use your medical gear to take care of this person but they're outside on the sidewalk it's pitch black outside you can't see anything you don't want to risk breaking your light or maybe you left your light in the truck you're trying to get light out there and you don't want to hold your light over them the whole time because you need both hands right maybe you're the only one there well, i like to throw one of these chem lights in there because it makes it pretty easy just to pop this out of the package break it shake it up a little bit Throw it next to where you're working and you have some form of light that can help you work. Hopefully that makes sense, but not a bad piece to have if you have the room and you're able to put this in your, your IFAC. It might be useful in low light situations. And last but not least, for all you EMS Nazis, yes, you need to have some, for, some form of uh, safety gloves, non-latex, of course. Be careful what kind of gloves you get. If you get latex gloves and somebody has a latex allergy and you're trying to help them, is that the end of the world? No, they're probably going to be a little irritating. It's probably going to cause a little pain because they are allergic to latex, but dealing with a small rash or allergic reaction to the uh, latex gloves is probably less on my list of importance as opposed to stopping them profusely bleeding out of their leg or their arm or you know wherever, whatever's going on. But it would be easier just to get latex-free gloves. Uh, like this and some people like to get these cool little tactical gloves um, they're all black and they're uh, awesome to look at and you look cool wearing them but at the same time how easy is it to see blood on black gloves at night now think if you're wearing light blue gloves and you get blood on your light blue gloves at night how easy is that to see especially when you're trying to do a head-to-toe assessment and you're scraping you're rubbing the body looking for uh, wounds or whatever that's part of having the gloves on and scanning the body right you have the glove on, you rub across the body, pull your hand up and you see blood. Okay, where is it? Where is it coming from? You can move on from there. But you can't do that if you can't see the blood. For me, that's really all I have for my individual first aid kit that I wear with me most often. Again, these are very, very interchangeable. Just because you have one individual first aid kit set up for one way doesn't mean your individual first aid kit that you take with you in your truck to go hiking or you leaving your home has to be set up the same way. Remember, you can always change it up depending on what your personal needs are and your family. What matters most is that you get training in this medical gear, in this medical equipment, so that you know how to use it if the time does arise that you need it. I really hope that you guys found some of this information pretty useful. If you are thinking about putting together your own IFAC, your own individual first aid kit. Hopefully, my setup can inspire you to make your own setup and get you training and becoming better as a protector, as somebody that can serve the community, somebody that can help somebody in need if the need arose. Because medical training and medical knowledge is arguably more important than even know how, knowing how to shoot a gun. You are more likely to encounter a medical emergency in your day-to-day -day life than you are a self-defense situation where you have to fight somebody or shoot somebody. You are more likely to roll up on a vehicle accident where somebody has their 
brachial artery severed and you have to throw a tourniquet on them than you are to beat somebody up in the street because they're trying to take something from you. This is important guys, you gotta know how to use medical equipment, especially if it's metal, medical equipment you have, you need to know how to use it. There's no point in having it. A tool is useless if you don't know how to use it. Anyway, I hope you guys found some of this information useful. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Comment, let me know what you guys already have in your first aid kits or maybe what you guys keep in your house. Let me know what you guys plan on putting in your first aid kit if you plan on building one. That would be awesome to hear, kind of hear feedback of what other people are doing besides myself. Other than that, stay prepared, stay safe.